Welcome to Home Sweet Home. Every week, the best home experts on the Sun Coast reveal their best tips and best tricks for inspiration and transformation. It's your beautiful home hotspot. This week, outdoor living at its finest. Hi, I'm Danielle Krausick with Superior Pools, here today with Michael Sowerby from our Fort Myers location. Hi, Danielle. Pleasure to have you here. We're down here in Bonita Springs, Florida, just south of Fort Myers. It's a little bit north of Naples. Uh, we're in the community called Bonita National Golf and Country Club. And behind us here, we have the signature hole, which is the 13th hole of par three. And our big challenge in this project was to take this beautiful backdrop and do something even a little bit more stunning. Uh, and I think we met that challenge quite well. Hi, my name is Gig, and this is my lovely wife, Jan. Uh, we've been in this particular community for about, since uh, 2014. We uh, are originally and spend six months of the year in Pennsylvania and spend six months here in Bonita Springs. You know, the cold, the cold weather in Pennsylvania is very severe, so uh, we like to get out of there for six months. We're from Northwestern Pennsylvania, halfway between Pittsburgh and Erie. Uh, and in fact, I grew up in the community we live in is Franklin, Pennsylvania. I uh, went away to school for about, oh, I think 12 to 13 years and, and uh, became an orthodontist and went back to my small town of Pennsylvania and practiced there for 30 years. When I was getting close to retirement, my son, followed in my footsteps and completed his residency in orthodontics and I was fortunate, we were fortunate that our family moved back to Pennsylvania, Franklin, and he took over my practice. So he's been in practice there uh, about 14 years and doing very well. So we're very happy for him and it's, again, it's nice to have our grandchildren close by and and to spend the summer with them in Pennsylvania, but we don't want to spend the winter with them. <laughs> when we bought our house, there was a an option with with the home to build a pool, and uh, of course there was an additional expense if you, if you wanted a pool. We decided that, being from Pennsylvania, we had never had a pool, and we decided, well, let's just wait and see. And also, our our salesperson told us we could always build a pool later if we if we thought we wanted one. So the first uh, winter that we spent here, we didn't have a pool. And we found that, that we weren't spending much time on our lanai because it just wasn't, it just, just wasn't conducive to, to look, you know, any scenery at all, just grass. Even though we have a beautiful golf course here, um, it, still, it still just didn't have what it took. We had talked to several of our neighbors and friends throughout the community and heard about com Superior Pools and Michael Sowerby, who lives in the community. So we got in touch with Michael and he came over and uh, we designed, he designed a pool for us. We told Michael we wanted the whole yard taken up with pool. A grass, no sense in any grass, let's just do the pool as much as, as large as we can with the, with the boundaries, you know, that, that are established. And, and we did, we took up everything. I don't, I don't even know whether you can walk out there on our property. <laughs> Most of the pools that were built by the, by the builder is a very standard, everyone has the same pool. <laughs> so we're, we're pleased with how it turned out. And we waited because we got really what we wanted. All right, Michael, uh, you got some pretty cool things on this pool, so I just want to pick your brain a little bit, see how you came about this, and uh, just give our viewers some information on when they're you know, looking for a pool, what they can look for, or give them some ideas. First, let's start with the spa. The spa is uh, kind of unique. Usually, you want your spa as your focal point. I know you said you changed it. It was over where the sun shelf's at. Now it's here, but I think it's perfect where it's at. But just give us a little how you came to it and uh, where we're at now with it. Sure, yeah, we, we initially had in the first design the spa kind of more over by where the, now the sun shelf is. We ended up moving it uh, over into this location for a couple of reasons. 
you know, just in terms of its placement there, I centered it on the kitchen window that's just, just behind it there. So when they're having breakfast or dinner, they can look right through that window. It's kind of like a picture frame. They see the nice fall. The real reason I'm putting it on the front side was that obviously we have a tremendous view here, the 13th hole in the community. And while they're in there, they get to actually look not only at the pool then in front of them, but the, the, the great view in, you know, in behind them as well. So we knew that we were gonna have another water feature uh, to begin with that was gonna be kind of the focal point from the house to look at. And so why not have that spot on the front so they got to take in the view as opposed to if it was in the back, they'd be looking with their backs to it. Um, and I think that was a, a better positioning of, of the spa's location. Now, what about the spillway? I know we have a bunch of different spillway options and uh, you're always real creative when it comes to spas. How'd you come up with this one? Yeah, it's always you know uh, great to create something unique and different on every project and just something as simple as the spillway, you can make it look uh, you know much different than kind of that, that builder grade type of spa layout. So we had talked about doing a negative edge spa where, where you have this way basically wrap around the entire structure and you would have kind of the pool go around it. That makes access a little bit more difficult. So we kind of did a, a compromise between both where we kind of cut out a large opening here on the front side. The water tucks on the spa, sticks to the structure. And then because of the beautiful glass that uh, the Kenzor selected there, uh, that glass is always wet, thus it's always shimmering in, in the sunlight there. So it adds a little bit of extra pop. It doesn't make quite as much noise when you do that because you've taken a little bit of the pressure away from the water to fall away from the structure. But again, with the three bowls and the LED bubbler on the sun shelf, we weren't as concerned about that. You know, lastly, it just kind of makes the spa less obtrusive as well. Uh, when you have that kind of bigger opening there, um, it doesn't look as big a structure, especially because it was a little closer to the home as well. Yeah, I really like the trick down effect, especially with this tile. Uh, it really glimmers off the tile. It does, yeah. You know, it's funny, uh, Gig is, a, is an orthodontist, you know, a doctor, obviously, and I always kind of uh, describe this type of uh, effect with my customers that, you know, when you're at the doctor's office and you're waiting there in the waiting room and reading a magazine, you always kind of have that little zen fountain off in the corner, and this spillway kind of creates that same type of effect there. Yes, it does. Uh, while we're on the tile, how'd you come up with this tile? The tile fits, the travertine fits, the house fits everything. How'd you come up with this tile? Yeah, so the uh, the Kenzor's Gig and Jan, they uh, they picked the Autumn Blend. We went to uh, Stone Mart, our uh, supplier there for the travertine, and they set their eyes immediately on the Autumn Blend. So that kind of dictated the color scheme of the rest of the project. And we wanted to incorporate a tile that, especially with this large wall, was really going to shimmer, but uh, that tied into all the colors. So, you know, with the black and the gold and even kind of a bronze tone to it really brings out the uh, the veining and the travertine even more. Obviously, the glimmer of the water is just is just really stunning, and uh, it just pairs up well with the house colors as, uh, as well, the pink color in the home. Yeah, because uh, some some pools, what we do is we separate the tile. You know, the spa is different than the pool, and then the raised area is different. But this one, I wouldn't have any other way. It, it looks great. Thanks very much. Yeah, it all flows together. All flows together. Yeah. The only thing we had to do a little different was just the top of the spillway there. This, uh, this tile has uh, a lot of different shapes and it's very difficult to cut. Uh, so we took the uh, kind of the cousin of the tile, it's part of the same family there from, uh, I believe it's called Soleil Anubis Gold, and we, and we tie that into the spillway so that we can fit that radius properly there. Yeah, what he means by that is on the spillway, it's a radius, and when you have a one by one, you don't have to cut it as much, you can make that radius. So this tile that's under here, it's all different sizes. So to make that radius on the spillway, to make it look right, it's almost impossible. Yes, yeah. That flow is really nice. Thanks very much, yep, looks good. As far as uh, the the stone involved and the tiling and and those type of things, Michael took us to, uh, to the stone contractor company and we got to pick up the, pick out the tr type of travertine that we liked, the color and, and size and pattern. And and then he, when we went back to his office and he showed us the various tiles that we can have and um, that was quite a decision because uh, it's overwhelming, about. yeah. It's just so overwhelming. But we saw a particular tile pattern that we liked and uh, we chose this one. Um, there are, it's, it's got some glisten to it and it's got slight little designs in some of the tiles. So it's got some real nice character to it and we love it. Explain, you know, we offer automation or this pool has automation, but you know, the main one that we use on most of the pools is the screen logic where you can turn it on with your phone and do a lot of those things. But explain the situation here. Sure. Yeah. The, you know, the Kenzors, we went over, you know, the benefits of the screen logic there where that control is on your phone or it's on your, uh, your computer there. And they could, uh, you know, have the benefit when they're up uh, back home in Pennsylvania to be able to, to utilize the pool uh, from so far away. But, uh, you know, there's there's kind of a little bit of that, you know, how tech savvy you are to be able to use, uh, you know, something like that. So what we went with is uh, a deck side control called the EZ8 by Pentair, as well as then a, a hard remote, as I kind of refer to it as, meaning that it only works here on property, inside the home or around the pool deck. 
um, and it's just a little bit easier for them to use. And uh, the other benefit of the deck side control is when they're, say they left the remote over by the lanai, but they're already in the spa, they don't have to get out to go get the remote. They can still control things from the comfort of sitting in the spa already. So this is waterproof? It's totally waterproof, can sit in the sun all the time, get in the rain, and uh, totally waterproof. It's never gonna be an issue long-term. I want to tell you about my shower door. Frameless, pure, clean, heavy glass. No frame, no mess, no worries. They were awarded Shower Enclosure of the Year by Glass Magazine. I love my shower door. Want to see more? There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Buying or selling? Home inspections are not only vital when buying, but selling a home too. They can save you money and speed up the sales process. For questions, call Dave Marvel, certified master inspector and educator at Peace of Mind Home Inspections, a veteran and family-owned company. What makes a kitchen great? According to the National Kitchen and Bath Association, a kitchen that is designed well, works great, looks great, meets your needs, and it's got to be a kitchen from Murotech Cabinetry. Functional artwork for the gallery you call home. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Max, let's talk about these bowls. These bowls are uh, really like the rocks and the way they fall, and again, the colors and everything with them. Thanks, yeah. So these are uh, made by Bobe. They're uh, 30 inches wide, um, same as the column width there. So there's good symmetry between the width of the column and the width of the bowl. Uh, given that the raise was already gonna be tall to begin with, um, so we could see a lot of the tile, but also give uh, the Kenzers a little bit of privacy from the golf course when they are swimming in the pool. Um, that basically we uh, didn't want the bowl to become too tall and kind of become too intrusive. So they make them in different sizes. This is kind of called the low profile, the LP setting. It's only seven inches tall and uh, you know, just kind of blend it in a little bit better with the rays of the deck as opposed to kind of standing out uh, a little bit too much. The, uh, the pebble inside is something that's uh, with the landscaper that I worked with after the fact that I, I always recommended the clients. The bowls obviously are going to be just empty with water. So they come empty. They so don't they come, come, they don't come with anything yet because these, these kind of look like fire bowls but we don't have gas in this community. Right. So just black Mexican pebble is always a nice little add-on. Um, kind of creates a little bit of a shadow in the bowl kind of something Gig and I went back and forth with that I kind of joked with him one day after playing golf. I noticed there was a few more rocks in the bowls and I thought the landscaper maybe came back and put some more in it. Uh, I had it kind of hidden under the plane of the water. Gig liked to see the rock a little bit more. And uh, so we always kind of needle each other back and forth there with which, which look is uh, best. But I think, I think the way it looks there, especially from the golf course, everybody gets to see these bowls and, and everybody at the club, they, they know about this pool here on the 13th hole. No, I like that how they're showing a little bit. So it looks good. You talked about this raised a little bit on privacy. Can you bring up more about the Rays and how you came up with this and with the golf course here? Sure, yeah, at the Kenzors, you know, uh, everybody knows them, right? They're great folks. And uh, just even today while we've been filming, you know, golfers have been coming up and saying, saying hello to both of them, right? So they wanted folks to be able to see them from the golf course, especially because the green is raised here. But at the same time, it's nice to have some privacy, especially maybe later in the day. And so this Rays here, when they're in the pool, the folks on the golf course can't see them. So they have basically the best of both worlds. Uh, on the other hand too though, with this large raised deck area to the side, by raising it, it gave them a really great vantage point of seeing kind of on top of the pool uh, over to the green here and the sunset here because we're facing west. And just a unique perspective when you're kind of sitting down on top of the pool. It doesn't uh, seem like much that it's only 18 inches high, but once you're up here, it seems like you're kind of on top of the world, so to speak. Yeah, no, this is, uh, again, from pictures, you don't, you don't really think about that for being up here. It's a totally different pool, totally different aspect of it. and. It's awesome. Like you're down there, then you come up here, it's two different worlds. Two so. different worlds, yeah. Yeah, it's nice to have multiple deck spaces. I try to create that in a lot of designs. Uh, you know, you're already going to have your trust lanai to begin with, but it's nice to have multiple areas that you can be together if you like, but you can also have a separate kind of more peaceful place if you want to read a book and get away from, from everybody, everybody else for a minute or two. Yeah, because you got your layout here, and then you got a table over there, and then you got your lanai with, uh, you know, to hang out, so. Absolutely, yeah. A little bit of everything. Uh, Michael showed us that design and we liked it. We liked the fact that you could, I mean, the steps we thought were so, and the wall here protects us from, from the sight of the golfers. You know, we're right on the golf hole and the carts stop right here. And they really, if we're swimming, we're 
we kind of have some shield against them looking in on us. I mean, it's wonderful. And yet we can talk to all our friends. This is the 13th hole and many people see us out here and wave to us and, and we have nice conversations with people. It, it's, it's really pleasant, but I like the steps and the wall back there because it does give us some, some peace and quiet. My favorite part of the pool, and I wouldn't do without it, is the spa, which is uh, very relaxing to get in there. And I, we usually have it around 100 degrees when we're in it. it. It automatically goes up to 100 degrees, and when we're not using it, it stays at pool temp. I love the water features. It gives it that calming that I like. All right, uh, so this sun shelf, this is a real big sun shelf, but usually when you see the steps, you tuck them inside, but you actually brought the steps around and that goes with the whole aspect of this pool and I really like it. Thanks very much. Yeah, the uh, sun shelf's large enough that uh, they can accommodate a couple ledge loungers there if they'd like, or Adirondack chairs, what have you, but also wrapping the stairs around just makes access easier to kind of the shallow end or the middle part of the pool. Uh, the second step just kind of naturally is bench level to begin with, so they kind of have a bench too if they want to sit a little bit lower to swim up to folks that are sitting on the sun shelf. But you know, it's placement again, kind of on the front side is obviously is, you know, out to the golf course. And that's why we ended up doing two equal uh, picture windows because this one beam that you have to have there is not in the way. So when you're sitting on the sun shelf, you can see the green over through the left side of it. And if you're over on that raised deck area, you can see the green unobstructed on the right side of that one beam. And then on top of that, you put abalone shell inside there. Yes, yeah, the abalone shell is uh, just a nice way to add a little bit of sparkle uh, to the uh, to the pool finish there, especially when a beautiful day like this when it's sunny out. Um, and then we do the step trim as well there. Just, you, you know, you can see the edge of the steps, not that they're not visible anyways, but just a little kind of a little uh, custom touch at the end there uh, to, uh, to have them shimmer there under the water all the time. We were from Pennsylvania and we never had any experience with a pool. We had a pond at home, but not a pool. So, so we really didn't know what we wanted. We had some idea that we wanted a spa and that's about it, you know, and we wanted water to splash around in. So our first contact was with uh, Michael Sowerby with Superior Pools and he, uh, he talked us through it and helped us decide on what we really wanted. I mean, he gave us many options and uh, we liked the idea of a deck where a person could could sit there on the deck and and have a pina colada, you know, in the water and uh, be cooling off at the same time and, and in the sun if they wanted. It was it looked great and uh, it is great and it's an easy step down into the pool. It's uh, it's it's very it's very nice. You know, you get your feet warm, cooled off a little bit first, and then as you go deeper, a little more of your body, and you walk into the pool and. The deeper end is over here. It's about five and a half foot deep. It, uh, nothing's over my head, but it but it's perfect for cooling off and, and doing laps and swimming. So it turned out to be everything we wanted in the pool. And it was, it was very simple working with Superior Pool. Now, uh... This handrail, I didn't even notice the handrail kind of blended in. Talk about this handrail, I know this is newer style type of handrail. It's a newer style, is actually kind of your recommendation there uh, not too long ago and called an artisan handrail. Basically, handrails are not required by code, but the Kensors def definitely wanted one for ease of access into the pool. And as opposed to doing what I kind of describe as the hospital style handrail that's not very attractive, this looks like almost like a piece of art, like an artist sculpted it there. And we picked the color, it comes with a variety of different powder coated finishes, so it's real cool to the touch too. I mean, it's meant to put your hand on it, but in the sun, you don't want to you know, leave your fingerprints on there. But we went with a, a hammered copper finish and chose that just so that it matched the bowls and obviously the, the slightly darker tile. And, and same point, it kind of faded into the background. So while you do see it when you need it, when you look at the, the magnificence uh, of the pool in totality, you really don't see the first thing as a handrail. That's not something you want folks' eyes drawn to. You want them to look at the view and the back of the pool. Now on the spa, usually you see a handrail on the pool and then you see one on the spa but explain why we didn't need one on that spa. Yeah, on the spa there, it, it's raised 12 inches off the ground. So just a little bit lower than a typical chair, but not much. So, you know, we all walk up to chairs every day of our lives and sit down and everything twice about having to really grab onto something. So the same thing applies to this type of spa here. You walk right up, you sit on the coping, you swing your legs in. Same thing when you, when you get out and 
it just makes the project a lot cleaner to not have a second handrail over there by the spot. Well, last I see you got an in-floor cleaning system in here. This pool's got all the bells and it whistles. It's got all the bells and whistles. Yeah, the PCC 2000 there, you know, Gig and Janner are up in Pennsylvania a large part of the year. And obviously they have a, a great pool service taking care of their pool. But, you know, it's just nice peace of mind that the pool's always cleaning itself. Certainly when they are here, one of the other great benefits is heat rises, of course. And so their hot water that they're using with their heat pump is coming in the floor of the pool as opposed to closer to the water surface. And so they don't have to run their heater as long or, or take as long to get the pool uh, back up to temperature. And that's the number one thing that we try to re remind people that that floor system is more for circulation and heating. You know, it's, it is going to clean, but you have the cage on there already. So you get, you know, the best of both worlds is going to clean, but at the same time, especially now from, you know, till March or April is when you want to heat your pool. So this, if you put this pool next to a pool over there with no floor system, everything the same, but floor system, this pool will heat up within probably an hour sooner than the other one. Yeah, so definitely, especially uh, especially overnight. Difference. Yeah, um, you're retaining a, you know, a number of degrees overnight because of where that heat is in the bottom of the pool. And you don't get that kind of cold feet effect too when you're swimming in it where you feel warmth in a normal pool up by your shoulders, but then your feet and your legs feel much colder. And also helps with evaporation too, because the other pools, they heat from the top, but this one, they heat from the bottom. So when it's colder out at night, the water is going to rise. So if it's hotter on top, you're going to lose more evaporation. Correct. Absolutely. No, 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 no. It was July. I think in July they started building our pool. And uh, we were back home in Pennsylvania enjoying our summer up there. And constantly we would get progress photos and notations. Uh, about how the pool was coming. So we really followed it step by step as it was being built. And it was it was really great. I mean, just wonderful. So at the end of the uh, summer, we returned back here and the pool was done completely and we could enjoy it, it was full. I mean, it was just, it, it just worked out so perfectly. We didn't have to put up with the construction involved, yet we were in touch with Superior Pool at all times while they were building it. All right, the main point that I got from the homeowner is they felt confident with us building the pool when they were up north. Uh, you know, that's trust and that's hard to come by down here. One thing that does separate Superior Pools is when you're with a designer, you're with them from start to finish. They're your full contact and they're always there to answer your phone and take care of you. And I think that's a relationship that made the homeowner feel comfortable with you. The Ken George are kind of definitely in the majority that a lot of folks are from up north. Uh, they're not going to be here necessarily during the construction process. Um, and so they, they definitely rely on you. Um, and, uh, you know, excellent communication is something I pride myself in this day and age. You're always by your computer and your phone, your, you know, your email. There's no reason not to get back to the client when they have a question or concern. You know, the, the, uh, the Ken George here, you know, they had a couple ideas. Certainly the free form shape was, was one of their bigger ideas. They, they wanted to go in that direction. They wanted a spa. They wanted a water feature. But from there, they kind of relied upon my expertise and experience in terms of what were we really going to create here to maximize, you know, both the pool, the usable deck space, as well as enhancing the, the incredible view they have. So, you know, we kind of started all the way from the beginning, obviously, with the design. One of the things that to make it easier for them is I worked with the HOA to get the approval for them on, on getting that done. Yeah, that's huge because I know all the designers take the HOA and they help the homeowner fill out the paperwork and, you know, push it through HOA. And that's huge because no matter if we get the permit out or not from the county, we cannot start on the pool until the HOA approves, you know, the, the file from right. the homeowner. Yeah, so yeah, the last thing you want to do is, you know, it's, it's a process from, from start to finish. The last thing you want to do is have the HOA hold us up. And so working with them, especially the golf course here, you have certain uh, setbacks there. Gig alluded to earlier wanting to, to, to utilize all the space in the backyard that that site survey showed us. That's another very important document there that we always need clients to bring that to us right away at the beginning of the process so that I know the, the dimensions of the home are correct. I know how much room. I um, mean, we went all the way to that setback line. So that last inch is just as important as the first inch here by the house. Yeah, that, that's huge. We don't really ever talk about that, but for us to finish that pool, give you the final price and to turn into permitting, we need that site survey. Correct. So if you bring that to us day one, we can you know, jump through steps and get you what you need right away. Yeah, no surprises on the back end of things. Right. And you know, while the Kenzers were gone, as with all clients, you know, I send them updates every week. They know what's, what's transpired the week before you know, or, or the week uh, coming up. 
but also taking pictures. You know, it was easier. I live in the community as well, so it was a little easier to work with the HOA. But as you can see with the golfers back here, every time that I was playing on the weekend, it was easy to pop back in and send them photos uh, every week so they got to see the progress, almost make it feel like they were here during construction. But then when they did come back, I had everything lined up with the landscaper that, that I've partnered with called Nature's uh, Blueprint. They've done an excellent job doing the landscape. I helped with the design, but everything was done. When they came back, the pool was ready to swim. They didn't have to do with uh, deal with any of the headache there, uh, you know, during the construction phase. You mean you actually got time to go golfing? I uh, you know, once in a blue moon. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> in Pennsylvania, while we were there, we built our own home from stick. I mean, not me physically. I couldn't hammer a nail, but I mean, <laughs> we we had subcontractors take care of everything, and they were constantly bugging us, and we'd have to go out to the home site all the time all the time and then we built an off I built an office which is kind of unique it's built underground uh, in other words that the, the everything is dug into the side of a building and the and you have to face south and once the shell is up they pull the earth over top of it so as it turned out we are mowing the grass on my roof <laughs> But anyway, it turned out very well. It turned out very nice. But again, the same thing. Come here, come there, do this, do that. It was just a constant tug on you. And I was trying to practice orthodontics at the time in a separate building. And poor Janet, my wife was so wonderful. She had to run out there and help make decisions on how things were gonna be done. But this was completely different. We were completely away and we had none of that hassle, none whatsoever, other than, and we did keep in touch and know exactly how things were going. So it was wonderful. It was, we, we had never experienced anything like that. <laughs> I want to thank Superior Pool and Michael Sowerby in partic particular for this lovely <laughs> pool. I mean, I don't know what we'd do without it. We'd be sitting in the grass with the grasshoppers. <laughs> so this is this is lovely. It's just it's just a wonderful thing. And Superior Pools has done such an excellent job that I'd highly recommend them to anybody that's building a pool. Well, we wanted to thank you so much for allowing us to be here today with you and allow us to build this amazing pool for you. And great job, Michael, on everything that you did. It yeah. is great. <laughs> Everyone that sees it can't believe it. They say it's one of the nicest pools they've ever seen. Well, I so. have to agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for everything. Thank you guys. very much. Thank Thanks you. for allowing us here thank today. You. Thank Our you pleasure. so much. Our yeah, pleasure. thank you. We love you guys. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Yep. Thank and you, Michael, you, of yep. course, yeah, always. Absolutely. Thank I appreciate you. very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us on this outdoor living edition of Home Sweet Home. If you would like to watch this episode again or learn more about our experts, visit homesweethomefla.com.